All right, so um, in this video, I'd like to go over some SQLite stuff. I was looking at the Rust cookbook and that just gave me the idea of just messing around with it. So at the Rust cookbook, if you go to database of SQLite, they have an example for creating database and inserting and selecting. But most importantly, it's the crate they use, which is, I wanna say RU SQLite, but I'm not exactly sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. Anyway, uh, here is the crates page for it, which does have another example in the front. So in this video, I would like to take their example and then modify it to use our database or a database that I created in a previous video and, um, well, schema and stuff. And those files are here. I already created a project. We have an all in the schemas. Let's look at the schemas first. So it's a simple database. It has a pets table, has a people's table, and has a pet owner's table. And the pets and people table just have names. So a person has a name, a pet has a name. And the pet owners is a reference table that has references both to the person and the pet via their IDs. They're enforced by foreign keys and also made them unique in terms of combinations of uh, person and pet. So yeah, the goal of this video is to go from their example to something that we can use for our uh, database. And let's get started. So let's take their dependency, let's put it into our project. Uh, that's this file. And let's take their source code and see Verify that it works and runs as expected. Uh, main, there we go. Let's make this bigger now. And after we run it, we can do a walkthrough to see what this is actually doing. Cargo run. Build, build, build. I believe it should print out this line. Uh, yeah, found person, person, and then it has the ID and name and data, none. All right, so what is this code actually doing? Let's read through. We have an input at the top. Okay, it's getting params, connection, and result. I'm guessing the connection is the database connection. The result is some sort of error handling or error. Params is probably params passed into the um, like the connection when you do a select and whatnot. We have the person struct, which derived a bug so you can print things out. ID is I32, name string, data is an option. Data it's probably an option because down here it says that it is can be null. So it can exist and sometimes it will not exist. Okay. Going through main, make this a little smaller. Main return to result. Empty okay or empty unit if it's good. And then I guess the error if it's not. We have a connection. Connection open in memory. So an in-memory database. So nothing is saved to file, cool. Con that execute, we have the create table person. So this is where they're creating their table, has an ID name and data. Now they're creating a person via the struct, no new method, just directly. They input an ID as zero, it doesn't really seem to make sense. Well, it does in the sense that, um, if you look down here, right? This is the only thing in the database currently, and the ID starts at one. So ID of zero does not exist. So you can assume that does not exist by just knowing that it's not a possible, a, a valid index. Anyway, moving onward. Steven to string, getting a name, data, none, because it's an option, so it can be none. They do con.execute. 
insert into person name data values I see so here they're inserting the person they just created into the database right and they're only looking at the fields name and data so they're ignoring ID completely on the insert and then this is the syntax for passing the params in write those numbers and they correspond to these items in the vector moving onward let mutable statement equal con dot prepare so prepare looks like they break up the statement and the acting on the statement in two segments here we have select ID name data from person person table and then down here where they do a query map and this seemingly has the params for the statement if needed there are none here and then takes a closure to act on each row and for each row they're doing person um, getting the first item which should be the ID getting the second item which should be the name getting the third item which should be the data and passing that to person all right so if that's true if I add another person it'll just print out two people let's verify that real quick just because copy Pace, call you Steven too, and call you me too, and then I can just do this line again. And we're doing this on me too. Yeah, okay, cool. And at the very end, after you got your thing that you can iterate over for the people, you do for person in person that iter, and then you print out who you found. And in this case, we found two because we just added Steven two. All right. So one of the first questions I had when looking at this is, um, they're using it in memory database. If I wanted to create a database, how would I go about doing that? And the answer seemingly is just to pass in a path. So they have a method called open. And if we do, let's say, test.db and then run this again, everything seemingly worked. And then if we open up a directory, we can see we have a testdb here. So that's how you go about creating your database for the first time. And um, if it's already created, it should just try to read from it. But if we run this again, we see that we got an error. And the error is table person already exists, i.e. it saw the path, it saw that there was a file there, it opened it, and then tried to execute this line and realized, wait, that table already exists, we can't do that, throw an error. So if that is the case, let's comment this out, see if we can run it after that. And yeah, now we have four people in there. And I guess copies because you know Steven, Steven two, Steven, Steven two. So that's how that works. Let's change this back to in memory open in memory make you like that you like that and I don't even think we need this Stephen 2 right now go back to what it originally was all right cool so now we're back to the original and let's run it to make sure we're actually back to the original. Yeah, original output. Another question I had was, well, I see they created a database this way. 
just doing a con that execute right here. How should I go about putting my code there, at least my string for my SQL, so I can create my databases? And the answer seemingly, at least to me, was to read the content from a file as a string and then pass it into here. When going about doing that, I kind of just looked it up. So if we go to the Rust documentation, let me go to, I have a weird roundabout way of going to it. I always go to learn first, which I'm already at. Standard library. And I know this is file system. If I type file, it comes up here. And this is the example I was looking at. Read the content of a file into a string. You can also use read. And they use standard file system file. And they also use standard IO prelude and they import everything. And then here's the little function. Open file, new string content, which is mutable in XMO as a buffer than anything else. And then file read to string, and they're reading it to this string. And then this is where our uh, string contents would be held. So more or less, I thought, let's use that. And we can just copy this and go back to our code. So to do this, we should probably also put in a function. Let's just write it here. Let's call this read SQL from file. From file. If that makes sense. We're taking a path, which is a lowercase string, and we're returning a big string. Hmm. I think we drop their code in here. And we also need their imports, copy. Bam. So we want to return a string. We're not really going to worry about error handling in this. So we just unwrap that. String content, read it to contents. Don't care about this assert. And we can return contents and that seemingly works and to test out that it works oh wait forgot to pass in the path here path cool to test out that it works we can try printing out the contents of the all oh and I'm not even sure if I went over the all um, SQL file so the difference between the schema SQL file and the all SQL file is that the all SQL file has some test data already here that just gets inputted. So we, we create a pet, we create a couple people, and then we create one pet owner entry. All right, so let's go here. Let SQL file contents equal read. And then the file name is all.sql. And let's print that out just so we can see it. And we have an error. Mutable contents. Oh, the operator. Yeah, got unwrapped. Try that again. Another error. I did print wrong. I always forget about that. And now we have the contents of our SQL file printing to the screen. Cool. So now that we know that is there, let's take you out and replace you with our stuff. And you see that there's a red line underneath it. It looks like it's expecting a lowercase string and not a capital string. All right. So we can do a string. We delete that line. So run this and see what happens. And we get an error. So the error that's stated here is that there is no says table as person, which is true. Um, in our SQL file, we don't have a person table, we have a people table. I like going with plurals. 
So let's change some of that stuff. Make you a person, oh, people. Um, it's not gonna map to this properly, so let's remove you and change you to something else. We also don't have data, just name. So let's change this to let ID equal, it's gonna be an I32. And the reason why I'm explicitly writing out the type is because from the row.get, it can't infer the type if nothing is there. So it needs it to be explicit. Row.get zero. And then the second one is name, right? Name, you know that to be a string. Row.get one. And instead of this being a person in here, let's make that a tuple of ID name. Oh, insert into, that's not gonna work either. So let's call you people and it's just name, no data. see what happens no such table as people so this is a very different error and the reason why we're getting this error is because of something that we overlooked so conda execute uh, at least according to the documentation is a convenience method to prepare and execute a single SQL statement so this is for single SQL statements our file has multiple SQL statements as such it read the first line executed it but ignored the rest. If we want to run all of our SQL statements then we need to change this to batch and batch does not take parameters. So let's try this again. No such table people. This is interesting. Um, there, no actually I made a bigger mistake than that. Um, this is the batch line where we do reading the SQL content. And then this line down here, which had parameters, params, and it did me.name to come back. My bad. And this is not a batch, this is just an execute. Okay. And now we have three people. We have Marcus, we have Willock, and we have Steven. So that seemingly worked. And to be clear, what we did was we created a method to, or we created a function to read all of our SQL statements into this variable. We used con execute bats to create our tables. And then everything else is more or less the same. We just modify it so it could fit into our database schema. So we're going into the people table and there is no such thing as a data um, column. And then we're getting those people out. Oh, one thing I did skip over is in terms of SQL and well, SQLite explicitly, foreign key checks aren't always enabled by default. There's a way of going about checking, but turning them on explicitly just seems like the shortest answer to me and the way you go about doing that is they have a something on the config so you can do config dot there's set db config which takes a db config and a new variable and the new variable or new value is a boolean so we just need to get those two var values in so let's import that and the reason why we need this is because um, our database has foreign keys that should be checked. So I would like to have it. So D, 
rust or ru sqlite config db config and it's an enum and that enum variant goes here we go so db config and the first one is enable f key which is foreign key and there are other options here the documentation goes over it in a lot more detail and let's just set it to true and then we don't have to worry about anything um, I think it has the possibility of failing but I'm not sure and I think it may return something so let's just ignore it see if it still works everything's working as expected all right so next what I would like to do is start modifying this person struct so it adheres to what our person struct should be and give it some uh, auxiliary methods and functions so we don't have to explicitly do the add to database here and the reading out here things like that so let's start with creating our person uh, when we're creating a person do implement person start with a new function why not so when we're creating the person we won't have an ID because they're not in the database yet as such I say this would be option I don't want to default to zero which is valid but I rather just say it might be here or might not name they should always have regardless if they're in database or not and data does not exist for us let's get rid of that so let's take in a name call it a string and return a person and then we do person ID none and name can use the shorthand syntax all right so that can change this so now this is going to be new and we're going to take in this name So, so far, I don't think anything broke, but let's test it out to see. Yeah, everything's still the same. All right, so let's deal with the insert next. So I think a person should be able to add themselves to the DB. So add to DB makes sense to me. Let's start writing that out. Function add to DB. Uh, so this is going to need to modify itself Wait, is it not initially? So let's just put self as a reference And what do we need to do here? Oh, we need a connection So one thing I have learned in messing around with this is that all the connection stuff can be done as a reference So you don't have to borrow the actual connection for the program and what are we going to return? Connections can fail, so this would be a result of some sort. Mm, unit for now. We can change it later. And then they do the insert here. We can just copy this stuff. Still taking connection. We still have the insert statement. And this is now self instead of me. And in terms of return, OK. And that seemingly works. So let's test it out. Comment this portion out. And then do me dot add to db, pass in a connection. Yep, worked for me. 
remove that. Okay, so this is something I think we have to change in two parts. Uh, so overall, this is getting all of the people from the database. Uh, I guess, yeah, right here, getting all the people from the database. But internally right here, it is creating a new person from the database entries. And this new person is going to have an ID. And our new function, our auxiliary function, which is right here, we don't accept an ID. So let's create a new one, just new from DB. New from DB. And this one can have an ID, call it a I32, and a name, which is a string. And it's going to return a person. And do person. ID is going to equal some ID because it's an option. And name is just name. So if we do that right here, person, move from DB to pass in those items. And I think this is going to change the way the output looks. But let's see. Yeah, now we have the person struct, sum, and name. All right. Now let's see if we can move this out. We can call this something like get all for the person. Get all persons. Let's do that here. Function get all from db. This does not need access to self because self doesn't exist at this point. It's just a method. I guess on a class if it was Python, but it's not. Um, connection like that. And what do we want to return? So we need a result because things can break. And I think a vector of persons would do. So person. Yeah, we can try that. We can take what they have down here, or what we have down here, because we modified it. Copy that. Move that right here. And let's format this and make this a little pretty. Cool. So we've taken connection. We're doing stuff on the connection. We're doing a query map doing that. Oh, we don't iterate over the people. So we need this line too. Let's get formatted properly. And then we want to put this into a vector, right? So you can say let mutable people equal that new um, the thing we're going to be returning at the end is going to be this vector. So okay, people. So now it knows it has to be a person, and this is the thing that's iterating. So you can just push them here. People dot push person dot unwrap. So that should give us a vector of people. And we can test that out here. So let's comment this out. And just so we don't have to change that many, change many things, let's make this person iter equals person get off in DB, pass in reference to the connection, and do you work? 
there was an error. Unwrap, person not found. I see. So at this portion, this part of time, result, is it a result? Saying unwrap is not there. And changing that from unwrap to a question mark, see what we want? And it did not. Oh, I don't think we're talking about this one. We're talking about this one. My bad. Yeah, that does not exist. This makes me think that this question mark, this was fine before. And yeah, it was. Cool, I was just looking at the wrong line. So we have successfully replaced this. Um, okay, so we replaced most of the code in main. One of the things that has been bothering me though is, so right here we have this me person, right? And we add this person to DB. But if we print them out after them being added to DB, let me do that here. Call it Steven. What we see is that Steven still has none for ID, even though they're already in the database and we've added them there. So to me, it seems as though add to DB should also update Steven so that he can have his proper ID, which should be three. So let's go about doing that. So that's changing you. Since we have to update ourselves, we should have a mutable um, reference to us. And the connection has a convenience method called last insert row ID that I think we can just use for this explicitly. So let ID equal last row ID. And interesting, I'm not getting any syntax highlighting, but let's see if we can just explicitly do this. Oh, it should be some ID. Ah, and we're getting an error. So the error says that one, this operator cannot be applied, so remove that. But two, as we see here and here, this type is a I64 when we need an I32. So we can just cast that real quick. And mutable cannot borrow as mutable. So we change this to be mutable, right? But in main, when we declared me, we didn't state it was mutable. All right, so now we see that Steven, once he's been added to the database, his ID has been updated. So if we want, now we could just use me everywhere. And we now know that me has the correct ID. Cool. So I think we did most of what we needed to do for person. We have the pets table, which is more or less a copy of this exact code. And then after that, I think we can go in detail on the reference table, the pet owners one, because that at least has foreign keys that need to be handled, I guess, slightly differently. So right now I'm just going to quickly copy all of this stuff and then write it as for pets. So we can just get that out of the way. Um... Yeah, just copy from here. Copy. Call you a pet. Invitation for pet. Turning pet. Pet. Pet, pet, add to DB, the table is pets, 
that's about the same. Get all from DB from the table. Pets. Pet. Pets iter. Pets plural. Pets iter. Call you a pet. Give you that plural. Make you a pet. Turn pets. Saying is not okay. That's because of you. Pet. Uh, 